factor out the greatest common factor. Some examples here. So we are going to start with 4a squared minus 24. We look at our two terms that we have here, and we want to figure out what is our greatest common factor. And so I would start with, you know, our coefficients, the numbers. 4 and 24, you know, go through the list. What's the factors of your smaller number? That might be easier. Um, 4, you have 1. We're not going to factor out 1. 2 and 4. 2 goes into 24, but so does 4. So we're going to factor out 4. And then they don't have any variables in common. Um, it's just a squared. So we're only going to factor out 4. And if we do that, what you want to think through through your head, I'm going to write it on here, is that when you take out 4, you're doing multiplication backwards. You're doing the distributive property backwards. So that means that you're really taking 4a squared and you're dividing it by 4. And you're taking 24 and you're dividing it by 4. I'm going to erase those and make them the same color so that we can kind of see exactly what's going on. We're taking out that common factor of 4, right? And so we're really just dividing all of that by 4. So now when we simplify for our final answer, you have the 4 out front. 4a squared divided by 4, or 4 divided by 4 is 1, but we don't write coefficients of 1, so it's just a squared. Um, 24 divided by 4 is 6. So minus 6. And that's our final answer. Um, 4 times the quantity a squared minus 6. So go ahead and circle that. And then let's look at the second one. Um, do you know the same technique. We're going to factor by the greatest common factor. So 6w to the 5th minus 21w to the 4th minus 15w squared. Well, 6, 21, and 15. 6 is our smallest number. Um, 2, 2 doesn't go into 21 or 15, 3, 3 goes into all of them, and 6, 6 doesn't go into all of them, but 3 does. So 3, and then we have 5 W's. So this, when I try and figure out the variable that they have in common, I just look at, you know, how many W's do they each have? This one has 5 W's, this one has 4, and this has 2. So they all have 2 W's. So our greatest common factor would be 3 W squared. So I'm going to take out that 3 W squared. And when I do that, I would take 6w to the 5th, and I would um, divide that, and I'll show that in a second, minus 21w to the 4th, and divide it from there, minus 15w squared, and divide it from there. So I'm going to divide that common factor, 3w squared, from each of those. So when we do that... We still have the 3w squared, our GCF on the outside. 6 divided by 3 is 2. w to the 5th divided by w squared. I kind of think about just well, how many w's am I losing? Um, this is stuff you did in Algebra 1, and we'll go over it more later, but, you know, how to do it mathematically, um, the rules that we have, the properties. But just thinking, I have 5 w's, and I divide 2 out. So I have 3 w's left over. 21 divided by 3 is 7. I had four w's and I divide two out, so I have two left over, and 15 divided by three is five, and I had two w's and I took two w's out, so they're all gone. Um, so we're left with three w squared times the quantity two w cubed minus seven w squared minus five, and that would be our factored form for that problem. Now remember, you can always double check your answers. Um, you can distribute the four, and make sure that it equals the polynomial you were given. And we can distribu distribute the 3w squared and make sure it's equal to the polynomial that we're given. But we want our factored form to be our circled answer.